All right, let's get into uh, this college football week 12 preview right quick. Every week I ask Chris four questions. This week I'm only going to ask three because we are not interested in playoff sleepers anymore. We know what the field is currently and what it will take to get each team into the actual playoff. So uh, so why don't we start off with this. Chris, the uh, best games of the weekend, and I've got like six of them written down that are going to be really, really interesting. I'm curious what you think are going to be the best. So I... I'm, I am excited for the SMU-Cincinnati game. Last year, Cincinnati kind of ragdolled the hell out of SMU. All right? They, they beat them up pretty good. I think Cincinnati might have to play this game a little closer to the best than last year. I think that could be a lot of fun. I am personally excited about the UAB-UTSA game because of my love for Bill Clark. I'd love to see him win that. So, that's two games that I care about a lot. That is two of the ones that I had written down. I've also got Baylor at Kansas State as my first one because I think that one is going to be incredibly interesting. Of course, Dave Aranda's name being brought up for uh, for all kinds of jobs, Washington, USC, and LSU. But on top of that, they just got their biggest win in quite some time against Oklahoma last week. I, you know, now you got to go on the road. At the Little Apple, they're playing in Manhattan against Kansas State, and Kansas State has been rolling since Skylar Thompson came back. I'm I'm super curious what happens there. And then, of course, there's the... Well, let, how about this? Before we get to the two big games, Louisiana at Liberty, I think, is going to be a hell of a lot of fun. I think that could be a really interesting ball game. And then Iowa State-Oklahoma. Like, is Oklahoma really this bad? Is is Iowa State better than this 6-4 and four record that they've put up? I'm curious about those. You got any thoughts on, on either one of those? Well, yeah, I mean, I'm interested to watch them. I'm excited to see them, but, you know, I'm not as a, I don't think they're going to be best games of the weekend. Yeah, yeah, I, I, can, I can see that. The two biggest games. We'll start off with this. They're both, uh, both on ABC, Michigan State at Ohio State. The line is, uh, what, like 20 right now, 19 and a half maybe, in favor of the Buckeyes. You, you dive into some of these numbers and... Yeah, it, it looks like it could be a mismatch with Ohio State's passing offense against Michigan State's passing defense. But Michigan State, I mean, they have just played tough in every game that they've been in. I I think that this could end up being a close ball game. What are your thoughts on this one? I completely agree with that. I actually think this game's going to be a lot closer than people think. There's no way on earth I've laid all those points with this Michigan State team. My breakdown on this game is pretty – Pretty simple. Ohio State receivers are unbelievable. And the weakest part of Michigan State is their secondary. And it seems like, well, that's a gimme. Ohio State's going to score whenever they want. Here's the problem. I have watched Chris Olave. Not Chris Olave. Oh, God. Quarterback's name. Oh. CJ Stroud. Stroud. I've watched, I've watched him look really good and look really bad. Every time he looks bad, it's because that man cannot handle pressure. And I think Mel Tucker and the boys are going to pressure him. And the best thing that they can do for their secondary is to get him off his mark and make him have to move and throw the football. I think that's where his accuracy problems come in. I think that's where he struggles. Yeah, when he he doesn't have a lot of time to throw, uh, obviously those wide receivers are worthless if he can't get them the football. So, yeah, I I, I think that has a chance to be really really tight. The other one, the night game, Oregon at Utah. And, you know, I, I've got something about this and most to gain here. But this is, I mean, this is a massive, massive matchup. Utah has been playing incredibly well over the last, like, six games. They did have that one weird ball game where they went up to Corvallis and lost at night uh, at Oregon State. But that's not really how they've, you know, how they've played. They looked bad against Arizona. I think they were saving up some stuff for Oregon this week. But... I think Oregon's been playing a lot better, too. And when Oregon is an underdog, they typically show out. This could have everything that you need in it, right? Yeah. No, that game could be awesome. Or that game could be incredibly boring. That, that That's why I can't call it the, you know, if this turns into a slog, then then it wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. Yeah. I'm uh, I'm with you. I mean, it could have, it, it's two coaches that would love – Love for this to be like a seventeen to fourteen ball game, right? I did mention on the Bet US show that 
you know, last uh, last time out, uh, Oregon just absolutely wiped the floor with them, 37 to 15 in the Pac-12 title game two years ago. They had not played since then, and it, it, I mean, Salt Lake City is so tough to play in at night. Like <laughs> that crowd is going to be bananas. The next question on here: Who has the most to gain this weekend? And there are a ton of obvious candidates, uh, but do you have one off the top of your head? Well, I mean, I think as an underdog, and, and it's a massive underdog, but I do think Michigan State has the most to gain. I really do. Yeah, I mean, that's my first I, one here. I, I, okay, good. I, I was curious, is that because they're such a big underdog, can that be seen as the most to gain? But, I, I, A, I don't think – I don't think they should be as big of an underdog as they are. And if, I think they got a shot to win the game. And if they win the game, holy shit, does that change how we see them? Does that change how we see the season? And does that shake up the playoffs? Everything is going to be completely different if that happens. If they win this game, all they need is Ohio State to beat Michigan like they have always done, and they win the division even if they lose to Penn State next week. So, like, they would be in the Big Ten title game but, um, but if they win this game and they beat Ohio, then, then they control their own destiny. They don't need anybody to do a damn thing. Uh, exactly. Exactly. I mean, at this point, they, they basically wrap That's up the That's where division. you want to be. You, you, want, you don't want to be hoping that Ohio State does something because you might need to help. No, you want to control your destiny. You got that right. You got that right. The other one that I wrote down here, the, uh, the two Utah schools. Utah wraps up their division with a win over Oregon. So, obviously, they would get to replay them in the Pac-12 title game if they get that win. But also, Utah State, if they beat Wyoming this weekend, they go ahead and wrap up their ticket to the Mountain West title game. And what Blake Anderson has done, nothing would excite me more than to go and watch the Aggies in the Mountain West title game, likely against San Diego State or Fresno State, depending upon who ends up going there. Fresno's got the tiebreaker, but they are one back in the loss column. I, I would love to see Utah State get this done this weekend. Uh, I completely agree with that. You know me. We've talked about this before. We love Blake Anderson, and we're real proud of what he's done and accomplished out there. Pretty impressive. Uh, such a short turnaround. And I, 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 would, I would love to see that. As far as the teams with the most to lose, I wrote down here that we got to watch Texas and Florida just – because there's no other sport that loves a dumpster fire the same way that college football does. Texas and Florida both are just train wrecks. Texas going to West Virginia well, and Florida, of course, uh, going to Missouri this weekend. And Missouri looked, you know, pretty good against South Carolina last week. I I don't know what to expect from either one of these teams, but it is something to pay attention to as we go forward. Do you have anybody else that might have the most to lose other than? You know, Ohio State, Oregon, whatever. Like, I think those are the most obvious. Is there is there one that we're not paying attention well, to? So it's another big boy. I don't think it's Texas and Florida because they've already lost everything they could. I mean, if they lose another week, like, what does it matter? Does it even change anything in their season at all? Uh, nothing like, they, at all. they've already they've basically already hit the toilet. And they can't they can't really do much else. I, I do think it's Oklahoma. Oh yeah. I think right now people are talking about Lincoln Riley. Like, he's still the second coming of Christ in, in the football world. And I just wonder at what time and what point are my people in Baton Rouge going to look up and say, you cannot look at his resume and see that he's like 94 and 7 and think, well, that's the coach he'll be when he gets to the SEC. There are people that are laughing at this team right now because when they get to the SEC, they don't think they're going to be very good at all. I think him personally, he has a lot to lose because of that. And uh, and then also, just simply um, them as a school, and in the way they are perceived and seen nationally right now. Yeah, yeah. You lose to to Iowa State for what two straight seasons, and like three out of the last four in the regular season. That well, could... it's it, 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 it basically it's not you lose to Iowa State. It you haven't beaten anybody good the entire year. And you play in a team that's so far beneath what they're supposed to be this season, and you still can't beat them. Like, yeah. while Iowa State's a good team, Iowa State's not a great team by any stretch of the imagination. And they are having such a disappointing year. You can't beat them on a disappointing year. What are we doing? What are we talking about? 
Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm with you there. One that I did want to point out. Uh, Houston on Friday night hosts Memphis. Houston finally got into the top 25. Everything is set up for the showdown between Houston and Cincinnati for the AAC title in a couple of weeks. But Memphis is, you know, they're a very volatile opponent. You don't know which version of them you're going to get every week. This would definitely be a big spot to lose if you're Houston. You gotta, I think that's a massive upset. I, I This Memphis team is not very good, Gary. They're just not. Oh, I, like I, I, I agree. But Houston would have to completely fall all over themselves to, to lose to Memphis. And I'll Memphis be, would have to play a great game. Memphis is not a good football team. They're not good at anything, at any aspect of the game are they good at. And they, they make a ton of mistakes. I, I tend to agree with you. The only thing that gives me any kind of question here is is Memphis beat SMU. And, I mean, don't get me wrong, Houston beat them as well. But I, that, that one just shocked me. I don't know what to expect. I, you know. I, don't, I, I, I can't explain that. But I just can't. I can't see Memphis doing that twice in one year. Like, uh, especially, like you're going to upset some people. That makes sense. That that's not. You know, this this wouldn't bode well to to who they are and how they how they've been for the most of the year. Yeah, and no, this you, Houston you know, team I'm, is, I think, a lot better than SMU. By the way, I think so as well. I think that was a really really weird game that SMU played against them. So. It was, uh, it was interesting. It was interesting, to say the least. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.